What's up guys and welcome to another episode of the crack a pack series today We are opening up a pack of homelands. We actually kind of opened one of these pretty recently uh, But we happen to get it again. So here we are uh, These packs only have eight cards and I do believe the uncommons are first then we get a rare and then we get commons Not a hundred percent sure. So we'll see what we get uh, But we will go through this as if we were drafting this set. So we'll do our best uh, to pick out um, our pack one pick one uh, I did not draft during this set at all, so I have no clue what the best cards are, but we'll do the best we can. Our first card here is Singular Bats. It's a 1 2 for 1 and 2 black. Does have flying, and whenever a creature is put into the graveyard the same turn as the bats damaged it, you put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the bats. This is a very, in my opinion, pretty good flyer. Uh, on turn three, it's a little bit low uh, power level in terms of power and toughness, obviously, uh, but it is a flyer and it does have the added upside, which I like. Uh, this is interesting. I should mention this, I guess, already. Uh, creatures tend to be a little bit less powerful in these older sets. A lot of things were mo more focused on the spells at the time, not so much the creatures. Uh, that being said, this is a perfectly serviceable three drop. Probably not necessarily first pickable, but it's actually, I think, okay. Uh, it feels like there are two cards stuck together, but I don't think there are. Uh, Dry Spell is a sorcery for one and a black. It deals one damage to each creature and each player. Honestly, for one and a black, that's a pretty powerful ability, but I don't think that that actually hits enough that makes it worthwhile. I don't know the creatures in this set, so I may be wrong, uh, and if I am, please correct me in the comment section, of course, but... Dealing one damage to each creature probably isn't going to matter that much. You might pick off one or two things, but probably not much. And then each player, again, I mean, one damage is one damage. That's perfectly fine. I'll take it. But uh, I don't think it's enough to maybe swing that card in anybody's favor. Definitely rather have the bats, in my opinion. Uh, An Abba Bodyguard is a 2-3 three for 3 and a red, and it has first strike. Uh, again, keep in mind the creatures tend to be a little bit lower on the power level scale, but having first strike really makes this pretty okay in my opinion. Uh, a 2-3 for 4 with first strike I think is probably reasonable at this time. I think I'd rather have the bats just because it's in a flyer, it's an evasive threat. This is a little bit more focused on just slamming through the opponent's defenses with that first strike mechanic, which is good, uh, but I'd rather have the bats for sure. Coral Reef is an enchantment for two blue. When it comes into play, put four polyp counters on it. <laughs> uh, pay zero, sacrifice an island to put two polyp counters on Coral Reef. And then you can pay a blue, tap target blue creature you control, and remove a polyp counter from the Coral Reef to put a zero plus zero plus one counter on any target creature. Can you ever think of a card that lets you go through so many hoops just to put a plus zero plus one counter on a creature? That sounds terrible. Uh, this card is so bad in my opinion. There's absolutely no reason to keep this. Uh, even if you did end up with this card, I don't think it's playable. It's just so much, so much involvement just for... Uh, a plus zero plus one counter. Uh, I, I just don't think it's good. Uh, I might be wrong. It does come into play with four polyp counters on it already. So obviously paying a blue and tapping a blue creature just means you can put one on there immediately uh, up to four times right off the bat. But in general, a plus zero plus one counter, I don't think is going to win you the game. And so not super excited by this card at all. <clears throat> Uh, Feast of the Unicorn is an enchant creature for three and a black. Target creature gets plus four plus zero. Not super stoked about this, but I think at this time in Magic's history, it's probably an okay card. Uh, I don't know how often kill spells came up at this time, so I just, I, I, unfortunately, I just don't have that information. Uh, but if they're not as prominent as they are now, if removal isn't as prominent, uh, then a card like this teamed with a card like Singular Bats is going to be a big threat on the opponent's side of the field, honestly. It is pretty expensive, and it is an enchant creature. You do open yourself up for that two for one. For that reason, I would not first pick it, but uh, it's probably an okay card. I, I just, unfortunately, because of the time period, I don't know for sure. I assume this is the rare. Uh, it does have the most text on it. That's generally how I tell, at least. Uh, Clockwork Swarm is an artifact creature for four of any color. It cannot be blocked by walls. Uh, when it comes into play, you uh, put four plus one plus zero counters on it. Uh, and at the end of any combat in which it attacked or blocked, you remove one of these counters. You can pay X and tap it to put X plus one plus zero counters on the swarm. If you have no more than four of these counters on Clockwork Swarm, use this ability only during your upkeep. 
There's a lot of text to say that this is a 4-3 um, that gets weaker, but you can always pump it back up. I think that that's reasonable. I think that I would take this. It does go into any uh, deck, which is nice. I really, really like that. Uh, but it is also probably pretty easy to kill. I think though at four mana, it's more worth it than the bats, to be honest. Uh, it's a four three is essentially what it means, and it can't be blocked by walls, uh, which does have some upside. There were walls in this set. Uh, so I think I'd take this over anything else just because honestly, it fits into any deck and that's pretty big. <coughs> Uh, sea Troll is a 2-1 for 2 and a blue. You can pay 1 blue and regenerate it. Use this ability only during a turn in which Sea Troll blocked a blue creature or a blue creature blocked Sea Troll. That's so specific. Basically, this is a 2-1 for 3. That's the takeaway. You can regenerate it, but only if very specific things happen. And so, generally speaking, you can't count on regenerating it. I think it's just an okay three drop. I don't see anything too crazy bad about it, honestly, just because again, the power level of creatures were lower during this time, but it's not that good. Uh, it's just a two one for three most of the time. Uh, and then our last card here is Truce. It's an instant for two and a white. Each player may draw up to two cards. For each card less than two any player draws, that player gains two life. Generally speaking, unless you're already in a very commanding position, everybody's gonna be drawing two cards. I don't like a card like this. This is very much a group hug kind of card. Maybe in Commander there's a reason to play a something like this, but I think for me it's a pretty easy clockwork swarm. Uh, the Singular Bats is al also okay in my opinion, but this is just a more powerful card that fits into any deck, and so for that reason uh, I would go with that just as a safe pick. Feel free to disagree with me in the comment section below. I'm happy to have that conversation. If you liked this video though, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next Crack a Pack episode.